What's going on guys? So we are still out here at the Super Duty launch. This is a 2023 all new Ford <laughs> Super Duty pickup truck. And uh, we have a really interesting video for you today because we're gonna talk about some of these new engines that are available. And this one's gonna be pretty cool. So this is your Power Stroke, but you're gonna learn something new about the Power Stroke and an option for it. And this is the all new 6.8 liter gas V8. So let's spend some time talking to the engineers. Hang tight, I'll be right back. All right, so with me, I have Dave, and he is a Ford engineer. Do you want to introduce yourself, sir? Yeah, sure. My name is uh, Dave Demuth. I am the Ford uh, Super Duty Vehicle Integration Supervisor. Okay, so what does that mean? So what does that mean is we pull all the systems together, we make sure everything works well for our customer, and we are one of the final, uh, final touch points uh, before it goes to the customer. So we uh, know our customers very well and what they want, how they use their trucks, and uh, engineer a solution for them, uh, both for uh, fun and work. Yeah, you know, fun and work can sometimes go together, they right? They can, right, depending on what you're into, yeah, but work and fun don't have to be uh, individual. I agree. Okay, so let's let's cut straight to it. Out with the 6.2. Out with the 6.2 and in with the 6.8. 6.8, which, correct me if I'm wrong, this thing's based off of the Godzilla platform. You're right, yep. All right, so tell me a little bit about why somebody should be excited about this new 6.8. So. In the future, you're going to hear our new horsepower and torque numbers of the 6.8 liter, which will be a significant improvement over the 6.2. Uh, can't talk about what the numbers actually are at this point, but we know the customer is going to be happy. Uh, additionally, with the 6.8 liter, we're going to be mating a new 10-speed transmission to it. So the 10-speed transmission uh, will be available on every Super Duty from F250 all the way up to F600. Yep. And that replaces the previous six speed that was only available with your gas engines, correct? Uh, yes, that's correct, yep. So right. we'll have 10 speeds on everything. Uh, the 6.8 liter will be our base engine, and that will be available on some of our lower uh, series of trucks. So think of XL and XLT. And as you start to get into a uh, higher trim series, more of our retail customers will be offering the uh, 7.3 liter as a standard package. Now, if you're a guy that's really focusing on um, work at a, at a lower cost, the 7.3 liter is still optional for uh, other lower okay. trim series. But you know, that theory that displacement is gone it's kind of a myth at Ford, isn't it? You guys are still working with high displacement engines. Right, we like displacement here, and uh, just because you have high displacement doesn't mean it can't be efficient. So the 10-speed uh, transmission made it to this. Uh, this is a simple engine, right? It's push rod V8 architecture. Customers, we've proven this architecture with the 7.3 in a commercial space. Uh, engine is uh, very well suited for what we're going to be using it for here at the Super Duty. No, that's going to be very cool. And I think the, the thing that you said, which makes a lot of sense, is I'm going to imagine from an efficiency perspective, this is more efficient than the outgoing smaller displacement 6.2. Am I correct by saying that? Uh, that's correct. The numbers will be released here uh, later for, uh, obviously, I said horsepower and torque and towing, et cetera. And we'll, you guys will see that here in the future. Awesome. So again, this is going to be the entry level engine, the base engine available in all of your lower mid trim super duties. And when you get to your higher trim trucks, if you want a gas engine, the 7.3 will still be available. Right. Um, I know you can't say the numbers, but I've heard that there's a pretty significant improvement in terms of numbers on all the engines across right. the board. I think our customers are going to be very happy with the numbers they're going to see. I don't think it's a we think. We know, right? We know, right. All right. <laughs> Thanks for correcting me. Yep. Let's swing back here and take a look at this. 6.7 liter power stroke diesel engine. All right, so this is not a new engine. And I love saying that because there was a theory at, at you know the early stages of the 6.7 that it may not be a reliable engine. It may not be the, a good engine. It may have problems. It may have this and that. Um, every new engine that comes out has its share of issues, every one of them. The fact is though, the 6.7 platform I think has proven to be that reliable platform um, an upgradable platform, a platform that you can continue to innovate from. Uh, and it's done that ever since 2011 when you guys first introduced it in Super Duty. And I had a 2011 F250 that I never had one single engine problem with. And we even use that for towing relatively heavy travel trailers. So that said, you now have some really exciting news to share with, uh, with folks interested in Super Duty and the Power Stroke, because now you have two flavors of the Power Stroke, right? That's correct. So you want to talk about that briefly? Yep. So, hey, if we're looking, we have the 6.8 over here, there'd be a 7.3, then there'd be a 6.7 liter. And what we're looking at right here is a 6.7 liter, as we're calling it, the high output. So this is an optional engine across all trim series, across all uh, F250 uh, through F450. 
Um, but this option right here allows you to get more horsepower, more torque. Numbers will be disclosed later. Key focusing, uh, let's, let's focus on the differences here between the uh, 6.7 and 6.7 HO. So we have what you see here is these ports. That's providing coolant to a water-cooled turbo housing. So now it's water cooled. Right. So that is very, that's a very different change from the current 6.7 liter. Right. So we have a water cooled turbo housing to allow the turbo to absorb more heat and we put the heat back into the cooling system uh, so the engine can run a little bit harder. <clears throat> With that being said, we've addressed the uh, cooling here in the turbo, but the exhaust manifolds and you're a six seven guy, you've known these things. Our exhaust manifolds are in the center of the V, staying with the true uh, Scorpion architecture. These have become uh, stainless steel for the 6.7 liter with the high output option. Okay. So yeah. it, again, it allows you to uh, make more heat and reject the heat appropriately to keep, uh, to keep the engine running as it should, durable, reliable as a customer expects, uh, and efficient along the way. Very cool. And again, all 10-speed transmissions all the way across the line. The 10-speed transmission has been paired with the 6.7 for a while now, right. but it is all new for the gas engines. And again, because they have a now 6.8 liter gas and a 7.3 liter, of course, which is kind of, I don't want to say it's a carryover because you guys have made a lot of changes to it, I've heard. Yeah, there'll be changes that'll be coming and plus some uh, power numbers that'll uh, also be improved with the 6, I'm sorry, the 7.3 liter. Absolutely, so part of your title is integration. Right. What else can we look at on these new Super Duties that, uh, that involve integration? Okay, so where do I begin? So we can start on the exterior of it. So what we're looking at right here is our new F-250 Tremor. So this is obviously a Lariat package. Uh, Tremor has become very popular with our customers. So we've taken our popularity of the Tremor, which includes uh, capability and um, prowess off-road. So we've taken that features and we've built on it for the new 23. So with the new 23 Tremor, we have a new tire that's coming in. It's a new uh, spec tire. Uh, obviously, it's a unique wheel for Tremor. Uh, still an 18-inch tire wheel packet, but these are 35-inch tall tires that the Tremor customer loves. In the past, it was, it was has it always been 35? 35, it was 35, yeah. Still, okay. Yep. So we have the running boards here as part of the Tremor package. As a Lariat, you get the fixed running boards, or you can get a power deployable as a higher trim series with Tremor. Um, you come back over here, and you'll notice that Probably the most unique feature on the styling is we've integrated box side steps into the Tremor and obviously other Super Duties too. So every Super Duty will get a box side step standard. And what's not on this truck is we actually have a deployable step that you'll be able to kick down and you have another step that's about halfway between here and the ground. Oh wow, so I to, didn't know that. Yeah, to allow you to have what we've called internally within Ford is a ladder approach. So think you have a step here, then you step in, and then you can step right in the bed of the truck. So that you can cool. get a side step on either side of the uh, box step. As we walk around in the back, you'll see we also have a step in the bumper here. So this allows you to uh, get access to your equipment uh, in the bed or hook up a trailer very easily uh, when you have a trailer in the back of the truck. So obviously this truck does not have a trailer, but imagine we had a big fifth wheel trailer in here. Our customers love our uh, deployable step in the tailgate. So this tailgate deployable step is still one of our customer favorites. Now what we did for this is we made this three inches longer. So it is more close to center point between the ground and the tailgate mm -hmm. with the three inch step. So that we have our deployable handle here. And we just walk right up into the back of the truck. And what the best part of the step is, is you walk forward out. So think you've got a sack of potatoes or water softener salt or concrete that you have over your shoulder and you just walk right out without having to turn around and uh, do the dance down. Yep. So we still love this step, but the box side step became a necessity for just easy, quick in and out of the truck. Yep. I see that you also have the tie downs now. Right, tie downs. So we have tailgate tie downs too. Uh, so these will allow you to secure your load if you have two by fours or a piece of plywood that uh, is longer than the bed of your truck. Uh, secure your load and then also prevent the tailgate from flopping as you're going down the road. Yep. And correct me if I'm wrong, your higher trim trucks, you now have an auto up tailgate as well, right? right. So we have a power up and power down on our higher trim trucks. So uh, I believe that's on King Ranch and above gets the auto up and down. And they also have some other features in the tailgate topper, which we can go talk about too. Yeah. Before we leave though, you'll see, and I, sorry, this is in the way. No we have a ruler here in our tailgate now, which we didn't have before. So this allows you to uh, take some measurements here on your tailgate, whether it's a fish, two by four, a uh, piece of woodwork, or whatever it is, just to get a rough idea as to, say you want to cut a board at, uh, you know, I don't know, 
30 inches here. So you take your 30 inches, you find it here on the tailgate uh, ruler, and you would cut your board, you make a mark, and you could go from there. Another cool thing that we did too is we know with our Pro Power on board outlet that you see over there, customers tend to operate chop saws at the bed of their truck. This is their. Uh, yeah, that's their workbench. Right, that's their new workbench. So these just look like indentations here, but they're actually spaced appropriately on some of our more popular saws that our customers use to fit the feed in here so the saw doesn't slide around when you're uh, making the cuts. <laughs> That's cool. Talk about innovation because I do. I have a DeWalt little uh, miter saw yep. that I'll carry out with me a lot. And yeah, that is really cool because when you look at it from this angle, you can clearly see there is a pattern to it. Right. So that is awesome. And by the way, is this still called the man step? I, I don't know if we can say that, but I'm going to call it the man okay. step. I've always called it the man step. But um, the reason why I say that is because this is totally one of those things that you do not realize how much you love it until you have it. Right. It is. These it's absolutely right. And whether even my kids love it for getting in and out of the truck. Well, these trucks aren't 1985 trucks where the tailgate's this low to the right. ground anymore. Yep. These are trucks that have some serious height. I mean, it's at his belt. It's above his belt line to get into this truck, which means you either have to be like a guy that loves Pilates to jump into the tail of this truck or an easier method. And the other cool thing here with this step is they've included a handle up right, top here. Yep. So to climb up here, if you don't want to pull that out, you can simply step on the corner, grab the handle, and you're good to go. So I just wanted to bring that up because there's so much innovation. That's kind of the theme here is that the innovation of this truck is pretty awesome. 2000 watt, uh, 2000 watt plug on the side. Right. That's, yep. that's pretty awesome. That's, we, that's we, the equivalent of a gas power generator. We put it over on the passenger side. So we know that many of these trucks spend their lives doing work, whether it's remodeling a home or building an infrastructure. Passenger side over here keeps you away from oncoming traffic or traffic on the road if you're using this as a, uh, a mobile uh, workstation. So simply push that green button and that power port back there becomes active and you can power uh, 2000 uh, watts here with this truck. Yeah, so, that's even good for a small little, uh, little portable air conditioning right. unit if you want to put a tent on the back. So also here too, you'll see that we have a light, right? And if you had uh, a situation where it's dark, we have zone lighting too. So we brought zone lighting into Super Duty. So you can press on the center stack screen which zone you want lit. So this little oh, wow. light up, including also your backup lights here. So it provides a big, bright area behind the truck. Mm -hmm. We also have the option for side from the mirrors and then forward facing with the headlamps. Yep, uh, from like an emergency response perspective, they call it scene lighting. Okay. Right, the ability for you to illuminate the scene around the vehicle because if you are, let's say you drop something or you're working on something, you're trying to find something, having light readily available around the truck is so critical. Even if perhaps you're working some type of an accident scene right. and you know, after hurricanes have gone through, Hurricane Michael, Hurricane Harvey, Hurricane Katrina, you may have no power and you're doing some type of repair work on the side of the road. To be able to illuminate the area around the truck might not just help the person working on the truck, it will actually create a more visible object for people driving up to it so Absolutely. they can actually see what's going on yep. so that is really cool so we talked about bed access we know that, that was always one of our customer pain points another pain point that we've had too is um, we brought in a new conventional trailer hitch so customers were telling us that hey it was difficult with our old hitch even though it had a very high rating on it yes to connect a safety chain so you see now that we have a little bit of an arc here that allows you to easily connect any size safety chain on this uh, new hitch. That's only about three quarters of an inch right there now. Right. No, that is awesome. And then we've also included a couple of other, we're all truck guys that work on this. Um, we've included other hooks here ah, too, to light a hook, a smaller breakaway. hook or a breakaway. And there's also another hole down here on each side. So we should have every type of trailer covered with this uh, hitch to make sure that that customer pain point is gone and past us and it becomes something that the customer is really excited about. Well, and that was truly a pain point. It was truly an issue. I have an F450 and connecting chains on some of your smaller trailers was a pain right. and to be able to remove that and you're always fighting for a spot to hook your breakaway to yep because you're not supposed to share it in the same spot as your chain so be able to actually have a dedicated spot for your breakaway that's ingenious that is that's really awesome so it's just you know, we'd look at this and say you know what that's simple but it just that's the kind of thought that we put into designing the new super duty is living it breathing it and just putting ourselves in the customer's um, perspective of what could potentially cause a pain point for them. So no, that is absolutely awesome. Okay, so as we come around, what else you want to point out? So again, we're back. We're here at the Tremor. So the Tremor carries a lot of its uh, very unique content uh, from the 2022 
We have a uh, unique shock tuning now with the Tremor that's uh, going to provide a little bit nicer on-road ride for the Tremor. Um, we've also touched on uh, some of the running boards here. We've got still our unique vents that allow us uh, additional water fording capability over the base truck. Uh, but before we go inside, as you see right here, we have a new package called our XL Off-Road Package. So XL Off-Road then brings in available on any cab configuration F250 or F350 single rear wheel truck. So obviously four wheel drive would come standard as part of an off-road package. We're bringing in a 33 inch tire. The tires are going to be very similar to what you see on the Tremor, just a little bit smaller. Uh, we've got a, a shorter air dam to allow you additional approach angle uh, with the XL off-road package. We've got the Tremor uh, vent tubes. Obviously Tremor brings in skid plates and then our electronic locking differential uh, with all this. So this XL off-road will be a uh, lower end uh, 4x4 package specifically focused on our fleet guys that are out doing uh, gas development, oil, uh, electric, whatever it is to help build the new infrastructures here. Um, we know that our customers typically would buy an XL 4x4 FX4 truck and the first thing they do is they swap the tires out. Yep. So we've taken that pain point and we've given them good tires to begin with. And you're going to hurt Craigslist. That's where everyone goes to get the tires that somebody swaps out right. on the new truck. My question for you though is, let's just say you have a, a consumer who's more budget oriented. If they wanted to get like an XL with the STX package, could they also get it with the off-road package as well? So currently right now, the XL is only available on, I'm sorry, the off-road package is only available on the XL, not the STX. Okay, but they could still get an XL as a consumer, not a fleet operator, if you wanted to get kind of that base style truck without right. all the fancy gadgets even though you're still giving them an eight inch display right. sync uh four plus what uh, 5g connected i mean right. it's insane what, what these new trucks come with yep our but base yeah. truck is pretty impressive with all the standard features on it yeah i was telling the other gentleman that it's it's you get more technology in a base truck today than you got on a high trim truck back in the day you're right that's absolutely true okay well, let's go ahead and hop inside of this truck and see what it's all about okay so we are now inside of this tremor Let's go over it. Tell me, uh, tell me what's new. So obviously this instrument panel looks similar to an F-150. It's similar, but we changed a few things here with some different angles to be more uh, truck-like uh, for the Super Duty customer. So as much as it is similar, there is differences here that it's not truly just an F-150 interior. You can see over there it's not powered on, but this truck has a heads-up display in it. So what's unique about the heads-up display versus other heads-up display is it allows you to see very critical information based on how you're driving. So down here is a drive mode knob that allows you to select different drive modes for different conditions. So on a Tremor, we have a unique uh, off-road, I'm sorry, a unique rock crawl mode that goes on Tremor that allows you to, uh, it'll engage your four low, it'll gauge your e-locker, it uh, fires up the front camera so you can see the obstacles that you're gonna be driving over and in this rock crawl mode. Uh, also, uh, Tremor has what's called trail control that allows you to uh, set a speed. Think of it as cruise control mm -hmm. for off-road. So you set a speed at one, two, five miles an hour, whatever it is, and it will do whatever the truck needs to do to keep you at that set speed. That is really awesome. <clears throat> now, the camera angles on this truck, can you get the new sensors on the top of the tailgate with the camera as well on the top of the tailgate? Absolutely. This truck just doesn't have it. Okay. So whenever, you know, those of you who are maybe hauling an ATV in the back of your vehicle and you have the tailgate down whenever you're doing it, you know, typically in a pickup truck, you have no visibility behind the truck. You, you don't know what's going on. So as you're backing up to get to your spot or you're going to unload or you're backing up to hook up to a fifth wheel or a trailer, you just don't have visibility when the tailgate's down. So now they've actually, and I pointed this out in earlier videos, they've included a camera as an option as well as parking sensors on the actual tailgate, which is pretty insane, honestly. Right. So this truck here, if we were to have power on the cluster, see that the cluster has unique graphics for the rock crawl mode. We won't see it here. I keep opening and closing yeah, the right. door just to show this huge, beautiful display in here. But the rock crawl mode then brings different colors and graphics and important information, including like your truck, your pitch and roll, your steering wheel angles. Uh, other critical engine information too you can put up on there and you can select whatever you want you can choose what you see uh, in different uh, spots on the screen so it's we're really proud of how the cluster is uh, has turned out and how much information it's going to provide our customer regardless of how they're using the truck absolutely well i truly appreciate it i can't wait to get behind the wheel of a truck I can, i'm actually allowed to drive because these things are so innovative you guys that's that's the word innovation it's it's never sitting still and i know every truck manufacturer out there looks at what's out there and they want to improve upon it but very rarely do you actually see a truck that can excite you this much simply because of the little things that were done 
to make it more, I guess, more usable by people who actually drive these trucks, Right. which is super cool. Hey, Dave, I really appreciate you giving me a, a quick guided tour of all this, going over the engines, going over some of the details, and a few little nuggets I didn't even know about the truck. So we're going to spend some time taking a look at some of the other trucks in the next video. I sure hope you've enjoyed it. Dave, thanks again. Thank you for having me. Guys, if you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.